Hey everybody, Syntax77 back with you, and today I'm going to show you my latest piece of do-it-yourself gear. This is not it, but we're actually going to turn it into it by the end of this video. It's a very inexpensive, simple, and believe it or not, possibly lighter weight alternative to a titanium cook pot. Uh, for backpacking, most likely, camping, things of that nature. Now, in a previous video, I kind of challenged myself one day, I was just sitting in the backyard with a camera and said, gonna make some sort of cooking system out of whatever's in the house. And in that video, what we came up with is something that I ended up using for a while. It was actually made out of a tomato can that I had in my basement, this exact type, actually. And it worked really well, it was lightweight. I've been using it without any problems. The only downside to it, and again, it's because it's what I had in the house, that was the challenge. It has this liner, okay? Now, for those of you concerned with BPA, I can tell you these liners, they're anti-corrosive liners, they definitely do have BPA in them. Like I said, I was still using these just for simmering water and whatnot, but I can understand a lot of people have concerns about that, and so I wanted to come up with something that didn't have the liner. Even if not for the BPA concerns, there was just a practical effect that I ran into a couple times. I had this half filled with water, the flames lick up the side, suddenly you have dry heat coming into contact with the outside of this, it gets too hot, and that lining will actually flake off right into the water you're trying to simmer. So that's never fun when you're out in the field. So my goal was to find an alternative to this with no liner, and it's getting harder and harder to find these cans without liners. Typically, you're gonna find the liners in high acidic foods like tomatoes, things of that nature because it is, again, trying to prevent corrosion. So things like green beans and corn, you got a better chance of no liner. But from my experience, it's getting to be that everything has at least some sort of liner in there. So I'm racking my brain, what do I do? Enter coffee can. It's a non-liquid, it's a dry item. I was hoping possibly we would crack this open and find no liner. And indeed, that's what I did. It worked out really well for me. I've actually used the system I'm about to show you on a previous trip that I took, a three-day trip, and I've done extensive testing with different boil times at home. It has not failed me yet. No problems with the coffee can system I'm about to show you. So first things first, you just go to the grocery store and you pick up some coffee, which most likely a lot of you drink already. So I'm gonna consider this a freebie to make this system. Pay attention to the brand, however. That will come into play. It will be an important factor, and I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so let's get the lid off. You'll notice not a solid metal lid on here. I'll get to what to use for a, a lid later. But for right now, let's just crack it open. Ah, delicious. Dump it into a Ziploc. Now you got yourself the empty can. We're going to pop that label off. Just slice it right off. Good deal, no label now. And exposed underneath is the reason I said that I would pay attention to using that chock full of nuts brand or look for something when you go to the store, pick up a chock full of nuts can and try to find something else on sale that has a similar can. They don't all have cans like this. Trust me, I know from walking up and down the aisles at the supermarket like a weirdo uh, the other day. But the nice thing about this is, at least on the Chock Full of Nuts brand, this first line here is exactly a cup, and then each line thereafter, increments of half cups, all the way up to the last line, exactly three cups. So this has an integrated measuring system. Super convenient. And you could probably fill it a bit beyond that, of course, but pretty nice. You can fill up to three cups and still have plenty of room to boil without worrying about it too much. A uh, similar size to this would be like a 24 or 25 ounce titanium cook pot, because that right there is 24 ounces. Now, the ridge up here. That's not so nice for pouring water smoothly. That's gonna be a problem, that little lip on there. And also, it's gonna be a pain to clean if you're drinking coffee out of this or making soup directly in the pot. That will be a sanitation issue. But we're gonna take care of that pretty simply. The only thing that's kinda of special that you'll need is not just a regular can opener, but a side cut can opener. Uh, so get yourself one of those. And what these do is, they latch on to the can and they actually cut the can off 
instead of digging straight down into it like a normal one they cut it along the side and they actually roll and crimp the edges too so you have no sharp edges at the end it's very nice so let's just latch that on there start spinning along and I usually just go around a couple times there I can feel it just broke through detach it pry that guy off that's it top comes right off and now you have a nice not sharp not going to cut your hands perfectly removed crimped and rolled top. Let's check the weight because your typical 24 ounce or so titanium pot is going to weigh between three and a half and four ounces with most popular is around 3.9 ounces. So let's see what this weighs. And that 3.9 ounces of course includes a lid on those titanium models. So let's see here. 3.07 ounces. So just about three ounces on the button. And then we add the lid 3.67 ounces. So depending on your model of titanium pot, this is actually lighter. The uh, disadvantage is, well, let's go through disadvantages because we're not saying this is better than a titanium pot, but <laughs> it's obviously something worth looking at if you're into little projects or if you're in a pinch at the last minute for a pot. This is gonna rust eventually. It's also going to dent, although from what I've seen, it's pretty sturdy, but it is, you know, dentable compared to titanium which is never going to rust never going to stain you're not going to dent it or crush it very resilient but on the upside this is free instead of 35 dollars so you can't really complain about that and it's also just fun to make your own stuff sometimes right another advantage of those pots out there that you'll see is they come with the little flip out handles and this obviously does not have a handle so you might be saying how am i supposed to hold this thing without burning my hands i use this just as it is not this actually i used uh, this version just as it is no special pot holder or anything i would just hold it by the edge up there because usually the liquid would be till around here so this top edge will cool off really quickly and i would just hold it by that and sip my coffee or eat my noodles out of there that worked for several trips no problem but then beyond that I've recently been making stuff out of Reflectix, which uh, is a whole nother subject, but that's like a insulating stuff that you can buy rolls of and it has like metallic tape you can buy as well. And you make your own little cozies. So I simply grab it off of the fire with this little thumb cozy that I made just to pick it up real quick. Slip it right into this cozy. And now you can hold it in your hands, no problem. And also, this will keep it warm. I did a test the other night, brought this to a boil, put it in the cozy after an hour and a half, I wanna say. Uh, yeah, I was still rolling with a temperature of 150 degrees. So it'll insulate, cook your noodles faster if you're doing the steep method, not bad. So if you're concerned about that, Reflectix, always an option. Of course, this is a tiny bit of extra weight. That is actually a half ounce there, so if you're super concerned about weight just don't bring it like i said you can hold it by the top edge i did it not a problem and then the final downside is that lack of a lid that will speed your cooking up well you could just carry a piece of tin foil i did this for a while as well and weighs almost nothing that works as a lid but i like a little convenience in exchange for weight Although that's a good point. If you go tin foil on this, you can do this for like three ounces. But anyway, for convenience sake, all I did, in my case, I was lucky. I already had the lid that I made when I was using this system. And it's the top to that can with a little thumbtack in it. In your case, if you're making this from scratch with a coffee can and you want a lid, any 28 ounce food can will have the same exact diameter as this chock full of nuts coffee can. So find yourself a 28 ounce can of something, cut the lid off with that side cut can opener, and the result is a safe edge lid that won't cut you up and fits perfectly on top of your coffee can cook set. Okay, that's how I made the lid to that. So really, a can of coffee, 28 ounce can of some other food that you're having for dinner anyway, can opener, and you got yourself the ability to make a nice little cook pot that rivals in terms of weight at least titanium pot 
course, like I said, not going to have the same resilience and durability, but everything has its trade-offs. So if you got that friend that you're dragging out in the woods for the first time, you're in a pinch, you need a pot, here you go. And then I won't go completely into it, but I actually make my own whole entire nesting system. You got your windscreen, that's simply a old Coke can that's been rolled open and some other goodies in there along with my alcohol stove, another pot for a mug, some matches and a flint, my pot holder, pop the lid on top, and there's your cook set. In fact, I just pop it on backwards and everything seals up. This whole system actually, eight ounces, and that includes the larger pot, the smaller pot, uh, matches, flint, alcohol stove, and a measuring device for the alcohol fuel. Eight ounces. So there you have it, dead simple, practically free, DIY alternative to a titanium cook pot. I like it, works pretty well in my experiences so far, so feel free to give that a shot, or at least maybe this is, uh, you know, got any creative juices flowing for you to make your own DIY gear. Until next time, I'm Syntax77, have fun out there. <laughs>